dear students today in this part of my lecture i am going to discuss about one another special feature of some specific nanoparticles that is surface plasma resonance or in short you can say spr remember here i am using the word specific it means this phenomenon is not applied for all the type of nanoparticles only some particular type of nanoparticles can show this surface plasma resonance so what are those nanoparticles which show surface plasma resonance basically the noble metal nanoparticles such as gold silver platinum and only a few number of semiconductor nanoparticles which show surface plasma resonance remember there are only a few number of semiconductor nanoparticles which show surface plasma resonance and mainly whatever the noble metal nanoparticles this noble metal nanoparticles mainly show the surface plasma resonance so for your basic understanding i am telling you first what is plasmons plasmons are nothing but they are just collective oscillation of free electrons so plasmons are collective oscillation of free electrons okay these free electrons are sometimes also called conduction electrons okay these plasmons are sometimes known as the conduction electrons because they mainly present in the outermost of atoms in the case of noble metals like gold silver or platinum those conduction electrons are present in outermost d and s orbital okay you know uh, this gold silver and platinum the valence cell orbital of this gold silver and platinum they have d and s orbitals in their valence shell okay so whatever this particular conduction electrons or whatever the surface electrons we have been talking about those conduction electrons are mainly present in outermost d and s orbital in the case of this gold silver and platinum so the conduction electrons which are present on the surface of a solid material are of course the surface plasma in the case of gold or silver nanoparticles most of the conduction electrons are actually unbound and present mostly at the surface of the particles and that is how those particular surface electrons actually will be responsible for this surface plasma resonance suppose this one is a metal surface this one is a metal surface so when light falls on the surface so when light falls on the surface it has to match its momentum with the momentum of conduction electrons present in the surface this matching of momentum is nothing but the resonance formation okay and because of this the conduction electrons will absorb some light and collectively oscillate and propagate along the x axis okay so whatever this particular incident light okay from a particular source it will just falls on the surface and momentum of this incident light has to be matched with the momentum of this conduction electrons present at this particular axis uh, present at uh, this particular metal surface and they will absorb that light and of course after absorbing that particular light they will propagate by making some kind of electromagnetic wave and they will just propagate along this x axis or you can say that along this particular metal surface so you should remember that when light falls on a metal surface at a particular wavelength of light it forms resonance and at the same time the conduction electrons do collectively oscillate to form non radiative electromagnetic surface wave and propagate along the metal surface the propagation of this electronic wave basically occurs at the interface between the metal surface and the surrounding the surrounding could be anything means your normal air surrounding or it can be any dielectric medium this electronic oscillation is responsible for some particular light absorption and this absorption phenomena is known as surface plasma resonance so i hope you understood the basic definition of spr now one more important point you should remember here is the resonance is effective the resonance is effective and only possible and only possible when we use p polarized incident light when we used when we use p polarized 
incident light. So it means whatever the light you will use for this particular SPR phenomena for this SPR technique. So this one is nothing but we should use the P polarized incident light. So what is P polarized incident light? This P polarized incident light is nothing but it is just you can write here where polarization polarization occurs parallel to the plane of incidence and that plane of incidence is nothing but you can say it is the x axis or you can say it is the it is nothing but the metal surface only so what you have understood here is the resonance is effective and only possible when we use p polarized incident light that means when you use p polarized incident light then only this resonance occurs actually where means and again uh, i have uh, already told you that what is p polarized light p polarized lights are the light which is actually where the polarization occurs parallel to the plane of incidence on the other hand you can have even s polarized light also so on the other hand if you use s polarized light so s polarized light s polarized light where polarization polarization where polarization occurs perpendicular to the plane of incidence perpendicular to the plane of incidence which cannot excite electronic surface plasmons cannot excite electronic surface plasma so till now whatever we understood that we can have the p polarized incident light or we can have s polarized incident light this p polarized incident light can polarize the light the uh, means uh, uh, this p polarized light means here polarization occurs parallel to the plane of incidence and whatever the s polarized light this s polarized light is actually here polarization occurs perpendicular to the plane of incidence but it cannot excite electronic surface plasmons uh, now in this diagrammatical representation of surface plasmon resonance i hope it will be more clear so here we have a light source and we have a this metal surface as i have already discussed this metal surface is mainly made up of some noble metals like silver gold and this light source could be visible light or ir light first light passes through a particular medium and falls on the surface of the metal whatever the medium i am talking about here this medium could be any surrounding air medium or it could be anything dielectric medium so here whatever the medium it is used this medium is nothing but it is the prism so basically in the case of in spr technique basically this particular uh, prism is most widely used okay so when light passes through this particular medium and it falls on the surface of this light it just converted the single wavelength fixed angle light into single wavelength multi angle light okay the role of this particular medium is nothing but it can just deviate the angle of the incident light okay keeping the wavelength same that means whatever the single wavelength the light we had initially that will be remain same just whatever the angle of light it will be slightly just deviated because of the difference in the refractive index so whatever the medium we normally use whatever the dielectric medium we normally use here 
in the SPR technique, those dielectric mediums are nothing but just refractive index of those dielectric mediums should be more than one or it is more than actually refractive index of air. I hope you remember what is refractive index is, right? If you do not remember, just first go through the definition of refractive index, okay? So when light passes through a dielectric medium other than air, then this angle of wavelength, whatever I have already discussed, this single wavelength fixed angle light will be converted into single wavelength multi-angle this light and finally falls on the surface. Most of the light, almost 80 to 90 percent of light reflected back to the detector and this particular detector will detect the reflected beams, means reflected light by making an angle which is known as angle of reflection. Only a small portion of light at a certain angle called SPR angle, that means surface plasmon resonance angle or res means it is SPR angle is being absorbed at the metal surface. And who will absorb this particular uh, small amount of light? Those are nothing but the, those are conduction electrons only, okay? So this light absorption causes electron oscillation at the interface of metal surface and the surrounding, okay? And this particular oscillation, means oscillation of this conduction electrons, okay? Those will propagate along this particular metal surface. That means this particular metal surface, whatever the parallel axis to the metal surface is, it is also called x-axis. So the propagation occurs along the x-axis or parallel to this particular metal surface. The absorption of light results intensity loss in the reflected beam which appears as dark band. Here you can see the dark band. Okay? This dark band can be seen as a dip in the SPR reflection intensity. So if you see the SPR reflection intensity curve, so you can see as a you can see a peak which is nothing but uh, deep in this particular SPR peak. So here you can see this one is the reflected beam of this uh, SPR. Okay. So here you can see a dark band. Okay. And this dark band is actually nothing but you can see as a dip in the SPR curve. For more clarity you can see the animation here. So here is the animation. So you can see the animation here. So as we have discussed, you can see here all the arrangement required for SPR technique. Here light passes through the prism and reflected back to the detector. Okay. So at a certain angle of theta, this theta is nothing but it is the SPR angle and some portion of light is absorbed by the surface electrons. See, you can see the uh, means light absorption pattern and you can see uh, means a dip in the SPR curve. You can see a dark band and dip in the SPR curve. So, okay, so here even alternatively we can get absorption maxima also something like this particular curve okay so we can get some kind of absorption maxima at a certain wavelength as SPR peak in the UV visible spectra also since this SPR is a light absorption phenomena by surface electrons a small change in the metal surface adversely affect the absorption pattern and hence of course the SPR angle. So it is therefore by tuning the size and shape of the nanoparticles SPR angle can be manipulated. Again as I have said oscillation of surface electrons occurs at the interface of metal and surrounding environment and that is why the oscillation is very much sensitive to the surrounding environment also. See in this figure here you can see just by changing the size of the nanoparticle here you can see 10 to 100 nanometer and this is the absorption curve absorption pattern uh, for the gold nanoparticles okay so here you can see various types of SPR peaks here and this difference 
in the sphere peaks is because of the change in this particular size of the nanoparticles so here from the 10 to the 100 nanometer and at various sizes you can see the spr peak at different angle means okay so different uh, spr angle you can see in the form of absorption pattern at a different wavelength so similarly in this figure you can imagine how different surrounding environment can affect the spr angle so so far what we understood from this topic that spr is a surface sensitive technique and therefore nature of surface plasma or conduction electrons at surface decides the metal properties material properties okay and then noble metal nanoparticles mainly support surface plasmons that result in extraordinary optical properties that are not exhibited by any other class of materials so of course some questions uh, some question is why no, uh, only metal uh, noble metals means question may come into your mind that why only noble metals why these noble metals are so specific means okay so you may have that particular question in your mind so the answer is it is only because of the stability of this crystal in metallic form and hence freely movable electrons are available on the surface mainly in the case of nano range of particles on the other hand although we may see free d electrons in other metals like other transition elements but they are less stable in the metallic form because their surfaces are mostly occupied by oxygen or sulfur to form sulfur sulf surface oxides or sulfides and hence freely movable surface electrons are less prominently available here the next point what we understood to so far is the optical properties of plasmonic nanoparticles are highly dependent on material composition size and the medium in which the particles are embedded okay so it greatly affect the size medium and compositions can greatly affect the spr angle it means okay and now the final point is about the application so you can see here the brightness and tunability of optical and surface properties make the plasmonic nanoparticles highly useful in numerous applications such as molecular detection solar energy materials color based biosensors cancer detection and treatment cancer detection and treatment and also for understanding the interaction of many biomolecules and ligands with metal surface these are the references you can also follow these references for uh, more details so finally best wishes and happy learning